Thursday night NFL on Prime, and I've got a free play for you between the Vikings and Rams coming up in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV, breaking down your Thursday night national TV game, 815 Eastern. This one is now Vikings at Rams. You know, I've decided to do a free play video for you on every Thursday night game this season, and since I started a month ago, we've gone 4-1, 80% of those five Thursday night free plays. We'll try to make it 5-1 and one here. I'm going to give you a total play in just a moment, but I want to give you some public consensus data on the side. Of course, I'll do my NFL Fade the Public video this weekend here on the channel. Make sure you click subscribe and hit that bell for an instant alert when he goes up on Saturday. But this does look like perhaps the most public play of the week, and it's definitely a public side, and that's the Minnesota Vikings minus three. The public is all over the Vikings early in the week, and for good reason. This line looks short. It looks like a trap game. But I'm a little reluctant to back the Vikings. Uh, first of all, I'm always looking to fade the public. I'm not in a hurry to back the Rams here. This line does look cheap. In fact, if you look at overall power ratings, margins of victory, opponents played, uh, this line should probably be more than a touchdown. So it is short. But the problem with the Vikings in this spot is do they come to play after that very tough loss in a high-profile game last Sunday at home against the divisional rival Detroit Lions? That's the kind of loss that could linger, a narrow 31-29 loss as a small favorite. And now they have to travel and play with just three days of rest and travel. So this is a really bad scheduling spot for the Vikings. So you can track that with the fact that the better team, the line is short, but the situation really favors the Rams. The public is all over the Vikings. I'm going to stay neutral on the side here. I'm going to look at the total instead. And I do think the over 48 is the way to play it. Now, this line has gotten some sharp money early in the week. The sharp money is definitely on the over in this game. It opened 46 by early Tuesday. It was already up to 48. Um, 47, 48 are key numbers, but I think this one can get into the 50s for a few reasons. First of all, if it is a flat spot, which it might be for the Vikings, that often that fatigue often shows on the defensive side of the ball. And all the Rams scoring numbers aren't great this season, averaging less than 20 points a game. Uh, they are capable of moving the ball when you look at their overall numbers, especially passing the ball. Their weakness this year has been their rushing attack. Just four yards per carry against teams that allow 4.5. Uh, Vikings give up 4.0, so they probably will be limited running the ball. But that means they're going to look to throw more, and I do think they can have some success through the air. Rams on the season averaging 6.4 yards per pass, but that's against some tough defensive opponents that give up 6.5. Uh, Vikings give up 6.1. So I do think the Rams can throw the ball in this game. And one thing I do think will happen is Minnesota can definitely throw the ball. They have a fantastic offense, really good passing attack this year, averaging almost eight yards per pass attempt. And they'll be taking on a Rams defense that has been very weak this year against the pass, giving them almost seven and a half yards per pass attempt against teams that average just 7.0. So once again, bad pass defense, good pass offense. The Vikings should be able to move the ball here through the air. I think the Rams might have some success as well. Whenever both teams can throw the ball, that gets you looking towards the over. We also look at the opponents played here. Minnesota's played some weak offensive teams. You know, held the Giants to six back in opening week. Nothing impressive there. Texans holding them to seven in week three was impressive, but that was over a month ago. Also at a 2-0 turnover edge in that game. But the last three games since, they've given up 29 to Green Bay and 31 to the Lions. The Jets only scored 17, but the Jets are offensively challenged, as we know. So against two capable offenses, they have given up 60 points in those other two games. I'm not going to say the Rams are a great offense, but I think they're capable and they are a little bit underrated. Meanwhile, the Rams' defense is a question. In fact, last week against the Raiders, holding a terrible Raiders team who's just checked out on the season to just 15 points tells me nothing. If you look at the five games before that, the Rams have given up at least 24 points or more in every other game this season. So the Vikings should get to 28-30 pretty easily. And once again, with the three-point spread, that would mean the Rams are in the mid-20 range as well. This game gets up and over into the 50 range. I think over 48 is the best way to play it. And once again, as far as the side, the line does look cheap. I get that. But is it a tough scheduling spot for the Vikings? Short travel week after that narrow loss to Detroit. And also, once again, the Vikings look like perhaps the most public play this week uh, in the NFL. Now, speaking of public data, I do the Sunday and Monday games overly in my video because I want to get all that data on Friday evenings and then produce it for you for Saturday. Um, if you want to know when that public fade the public video goes live this week, and make sure you click the bell and you hit that bell when you subscribe here on Wager Talk TV. And speaking of the public, what were they, 6-0 and last week? They have been smoking it. Probably the best two-week run I've seen in quite a while. So we don't just blindly fade the public. Uh, this line does look cheap to me. Um, I worry about the mindset of Minnesota, but otherwise I probably want nothing to do with the Rams. And the public has been crushing it. And we talk a lot about this. Mid-season in October is often when the public does well, and they sure have the last several weeks. 
So be sure to check out this weekend's video, and we'll see if there's any of those public dogs, perhaps. That's what I like to fade. And fading the big public dogs has still actually worked well this year overall. Hey, comment below. How are you playing this Thursday night game? Side total player props. Always love those player props here. Drop them below. Uh, Rams have struggled to run the ball this year. Minnesota does have a good run D. It's another reason I think both teams will throw the ball with some success. So I'd probably lean receiver, quarterback props over. Let me know your thoughts on player props. Drop them in the comments below. I read them. I reply back. And we can all learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. Thumbs up, like also. If you're liking these free play videos, I will keep doing every Thursday night NFL game for you. We've gone 4-1 and one on the first five. We'll see if we win this over. You know, might not make my client best bet card, but I like to give you these 1% TV leans whenever I can. Thumbs up, like is always appreciated. And comment below, I will keep doing these free play weeknight videos. I've got your Thursday night college football free play video as well. Friday night college football and then a ton of content for this weekend, including my college football top 25 videos. Once again, click subscribe and click that bell for instant alerts. Now, if you do want my personal best bets, that's what you need if you're serious about winning long term because I've done this for 29 straight years as a full-time professional handicapper. And when I have a play, my clients get it as well. It's quite simple. I'm very selective. Maybe one to two plays during a weeknight, three to four on Saturday and Sunday. And it comes out big time for you. The selectivity pays off. High win percentage, high return on investment, and 170 units won already this calendar year. And there's still over two months to go in 2024. Lock in a one-year all-access anytime you like. But if you want to try out a smaller package, this isn't a bad time to do the 30-day sampler as you're getting an instant discount this week with no promo code needed at wagertalk.com. 30-day package for just $249. That works out to just $8 a day. And this is the only time of the year over the next couple of weeks in which baseball, football, and basketball is all going at once. NBA is here. I'm number one all time in units one in the NBA, including the last three years, up 200 units alone the last three seasons in the NBA. College and pro football is fantastic. Enter this year, number one combined the last two years in ATS profit, and we kept it going this year with a great college and pro football season. And the World Series is here as well. Don't forget, 3-0 baseball playoff run last week. Should be no surprise. Finished the regular season on a 31-13 and best bet run in baseball. So yes, I win in all sports consistently, and right now you get a 30-day special for just $249. That works out to $8 a day. Or if you're ready to step up and do the one-year all-access and take a serious long-term investment approach, I'll bring the promo code back. SM365 gets you the next 365 days and nights, college and pro football, basketball, and baseball for just over $3 a day, just over a dollar a play, because that promo code gets you an instant $811 discount. That works out to just $99 a month. $3 a day, a dollar a play. SM365 is the one year all access promo code. Or once again, if you want to try out that 30 day sampler, get it right now for just $249. No promo code needed. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on social media at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L. You know the deal, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great. Free play videos coming up next.